Gaia Kantake, Earth Keeper, Earth Keeper. Your feet are wet from many lands. Keep your heart clean and you will see the unseen. Saishale, Gaia Kantake, carried over nation's water. Saishale. Happy Friday, my people. Thank you so much for joining me again here on New Heart Transformation, Soma Fusion Radio Network. Today, I have an amazing guest with me, Adam Roa, who just has so many fabulous, wonderful things that he does. I'm just going to tell you about a couple of them because there are so many. <laughs> But uh, the one that really has me is uh, his book, Cosmic Philosophy. He also has a podcast and he has, I'm gonna let him tell you about that though, and when we're talking. He, uh, he is a musician and uh, you know, he does spoken word poetry. That's really fabulous. So I'm just anxious to get Adam on here. I don't wanna talk that much. I wanna just talk to you, Adam, hello. Hi, hi. Thank you for having me. It's such a pleasure to be here and um, get to drop in with you. Yeah, I'm so glad to um, have you on one of my shows again. Last time I spoke to you, I um, was doing this uh, tele-summit and it so wasn't me. I love interviewing people, but that whole tele-summit thing was not the way for me to go. So it biffed. I followed through, but it biffed. But we had a great interview. Yeah, every, you know, uh, I, life is really, people celebrate the things that go really well, but most of life is made up of things that didn't go the way we thought they would. So <laughs> biffing um, and having things fall short is just more training for the things that eventually do succeed that everyone then celebrates for years and years. Like, Oh, you're the person who did that thing. And you're like, yeah. And you didn't see the 15 things that didn't go so well. Right. So um, I, I've been this time, I have been listening to your podcast last time when I interviewed you. No, I had not listened. Yes. I'm an avid listener. There are some that really, really caught me. And I, I just want to make sure that I mentioned those. The one with uh, your mentor, Richard, uh, how do you say his last name? Yeah, Richard Andrew Saloni. Oh, fabulous. Uh, my my podcast is called The Deep Dive with yeah. Adam Roa, and it's available everywhere. And, and literally is one, is, I've been doing it for years just because I love having these deep conversations. I love them so much. And not only do you have those deep conversations, but you have those deep conversations with yourself, the musings. I do musings, so I really love it because that's, that's the flow. That's just, you know, sharing what's actually occurring and what's present for you as your, as your being, you know? Um, so that's fun, fun. Those yeah, it's, it's funny because um, the format's changed over the last several months where now when I have a guest on, we basically take an unanswerable question and we, I call it a deep dive question. And we just go on a deep dive into that, that question and explore it. Because at the end of the day, um, so many people seem to, to get hung up on the answer. Like we're all in this conflict and there needs to be an answer. And in reality, I think that the people who are most inspiring to me, the, the uh, ones that I aspire to be like, it's because of how they think. It's how they view conflict. It's how they view their own shortcomings. It's how they view the world that's so inspiring. And so when you can take a question that doesn't really have an answer and just explore it with someone who's inspiring, uh, that's so much fun for me. And so doing that and then the musings, like you said, which is really just kind of me doing the same thing on a topic. Um, everything from relationships and, and sexuality and dating to plant medicine and, and business, you know, and money. And a conversation with mama. <laughs> ah, you listened to that one. Of course I did. Yeah. I brought, I brought my mom on shout out Vicky. I love you. And <laughs> um, yeah, we had a really vulnerable and honest conversation about what it was like, you know, raising me and for me to grow up in an environment where I, I really didn't feel safe uh, and all of those things. So that was a pretty powerful episode. 
It was. And I loved what she said. It just, I, I was curious because I have been following you for so long or paying attention to what you're doing for so long that um, she said, take a half hour to it's like, you asked her what she does now or what she's doing now or something to like, take care of herself. She said, take a half hour to herself. And, and to be right with the world again. And that's so crucial. Like people don't do that. And it's, it's a lot of what you're saying about being a conscious participant in this world, in this way of being, you know, you got to take care of yourself and love yourself. Yeah. I think that at the end of the day, all of this comes back to self-love. <laughs> Every issue we're facing on the planet, I think you could trace back to, uh, to a lack of self-love. Uh, because if you're someone who is going to take advantage of other people, if you're someone who's going to harm other people, if you're someone who's going to um, prioritize greed in your life, for example, I, I think that there are deep rooted wounds underneath that, that um, if someone can learn to pour love into, they can bring that back into wholeness. And by doing that, they're actually going to lose the desire to act the way they've been acting. And so it's a, um, I think it all stems from the self. And, it, and if that self is full of love, then all our actions will, will be a byproduct of that and carry that frequency of love in it. Right. That sustained happiness that you speak of. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Um, I'm very curious because I don't think that I've heard anywhere. Where did you are seen, you are heard, and you are loved come from? And you say that to open the podcast, just for those of you that don't know. So where, where'd you get that? It's so funny. I have no idea. I, what I, what I do know is that it came over uh, time because it's evolved now where it's always in all ways, you are seen, you are heard and you are loved. And the reason why I started saying that was because I feel like that's all anyone ever wants. At the end of the day, every person on this planet wants to feel seen. They want to feel heard and they want to feel loved. And if, if someone feels those three things, th I believe that they are not going to go out and cause harm to other people. And I, I believe that they are going to want uh, to spread that to other people. It's, it's, mm -hmm. you know, the, the issues we're facing in society right now are so complex in terms of the actual mechanisms and systems in place from the education system, the political system, the, uh, the, the like, the political system, like it's all so complex that actually figuring out how to adjust the system and, and whatever, that's for people who are way smarter than me and who can, who can figure out how to do that. But what I do believe is that all of those issues, all of those things that we're facing um, stem from people who are hurting, you know, people who are um, afraid that if they don't have enough money that they will uh, not be able to provide for their families or for themselves, or if they don't have um, their, their looks in a certain way that no one will love them or like them, or like there's these, these deep rooted fears that stem from not feeling seen, heard and loved and not having self love again, that are what contribute and create the, the issues that we're facing. And so I don't know the answers to how to change the systems, uh, but I do know that I believe it all stems from the seen, heard, and loved aspects and the self-love aspects. And so therefore I know how I can help there. So that's my, that's my zone. That's, that's where I plug in, that's where I play. <laughs> that's so beautiful. And so, so, so much you, you know, I, you said something that, in one of the podcasts, uh, I think it might have actually been amusing, but you said, we're all raindrops coming from the same cloud. And, um, you know, as, as someone who is also a seeker, and that's the reason that I started this convert casual conversations with people that I admire, um, is because I spent so much time, like, you know, trying to get the answer outside of myself. But I've come to realize that this, this stillness that's here 
it, it gives the answer, but also when I, when I'm here, I'm, I'm receiving all my other, all the other, you know, parts of the rain, all the other, all the other ones that came down with me, my tribe, whatever you want to call it. Um, so beautiful. And, um, you know, I think that's what brought me to your book, Cosmic Philosophy, and some people can see that I'm holding yeah. it up. But yeah, I mean, you end it so beautifully. And I just love that you have, you created space in there so people can write in the borders and do whatever they wanted to do. But um, I, I want to read one quick thing. Yeah, awesome. I love this. No one's ever done this before. <laughs> Shadows remind us that light is around the corner. Be not afraid of the darkness, for it is not truly dark. It is in actuality a reflection of the parts of ourselves that are not yet understood. There is a big difference between the two. Being misunderstood, the shadow gains some semblance of power because it is charged with fear. Fear of the unknown and the uncontrolled. But the fear also gives it life, where before there was nothing outside ourselves. Why fear? Why fear that which is only a reflection? In the naming of the shadow, we will take ownership of it, and that ownership will bring forth the light unto the dark. And I know that you've had, you know, it, it was like, wow, because you've had this struggle with depression and, um, and suicidal thoughts. And I have to admit that I saw your writing and I'm studying um, hypnotherapy and I saw your writing because you posted your actual handwriting. I believe it's yours. Is it yours? Yeah. All, all the writing that's on my, my Instagram. Yeah. So yeah. you posted that and sneaky little um, one who's um, just, I'm learning things. I, I read your handwriting and it definitely does show that side of yourself of, you know, that depression and the suicidal thinking and those things. So like, you can you tell that from my handwriting. Uh-huh. Yeah. What? It's pretty, it's pretty amazing. What? Uh, what? What was it? Is it how I cross my T's or dot my I's? Like, how do you tell that? The way that you leave the D open, the loop open in your D's, the ways that your G's, like the slanting of your writing. There's so many, many, many things that I'm learning. Oh. Yeah, it's huge what we can learn about our, you know, the underlying, the dark parts that none of us want to see, those things that we can actually change because you can still change that even though your handwriting tells the truth of who you are. Wow. I've never even heard of that. That's impressive. That's amazing. And I, I started that when I was like 16. One of my teachers was like, we're going to analyze your handwriting. I was like, oh, wow. And then I was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just recently, my school that I'm attending, they teach it because um, you can learn so much about a person by their handwriting alone. And, and so many of the sessions that I watched by my professors and that where they have, cause you have to do an application or whatever, you have to use your handwriting to fill out a form and they read your writing from that. So two questions pop up for me. One, um, can I send you the handwriting of every woman I start dating just for a <laughs> quick analysis from this point forward? That would be awesome. Uh, like save me a lot of time. Uh, that's the first question. And then the second question is, um, so in modern schools, right? Like today, uh, kids are growing up earlier and earlier, not actually writing anymore as their primary way of taking notes and things. It's all on the laptop and mm -hmm. tablets and stuff. Um, so I guess we're, I, I, it's, it's, it's not really a question, but it's just so interesting because it's making me think of how much um, this changes everything because they're not writing physically uh, as a primary way of, of getting their thoughts out anymore. And that comes up a heck of a lot, but you can still read. You can still read from their their typing. Or okay, good. So you can still look at my- Yeah, I, don't, I haven't through. gotten that deep into- our our training on that but yes you you definitely can all right i'm gonna send you i'm gonna send you screenshots of i'm gonna ask i'm gonna ask the next time i'm dating someone that's gonna happen i will do it for you Thank but you. then the other side the other side of that is i also do per personality personality assessments i just uh i just learned that as well in a different course because i'm fascinated 
you know, hypnotherapy taught me it's so easy to read a person from their how they speak, from how they write, from their body positioning, from all kinds of different things you can read a person. And I, that's my thing. I like reading people. I, because if I can read you, I can help you understand how to change those patterns and beliefs. And I know you talk about beliefs a lot in terms of um, you know, be, being the true self. So would you say that my writing would be different now that I'm not no longer dealing with depression and, and that? Well, send me some. I think that the, the, the underlying factor will still show. However, there will be other things in your handwriting that might show the shift. But that, that is, like you said, it's something that's inherited from your family. So it is going to show up. You know. I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep, you know, every couple of weeks posting photos of my journal <laughs> entries and poetry, like I have been, and you can just keep, give me the update every few weeks of like, okay, it's good to see that you're, you're um, taking care of that, you know, parental wounding that was showing up in how you made your K. <laughs> I love you. That's so great. <laughs> and I'm going to change the topic too. <laughs> <laughs> Shift, but I'm happy to do that for you. Um, I had no idea that you had been to Egypt. I knew you'd been to Indonesia, but you know, those are my stomping grounds. I spent my formative years in Egypt from about 12 to 16. Hmm. So I, I was like, wow, you know, cause the things that you're talking about, it's, it just really, um, it hit home for me. It was magical. Yeah, e- e- Egypt, I mean, that's how cosmic philosophy happened. I was on this crazy trip in Egypt. And uh, after it was actually the the first time I believe in the history of the Egyptian government that they'd allowed all three pyramids of Giza to be rented out privately at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so I got an opportunity to go inside each of them uh, for two hours uh, inside each. And so spending six hours inside the pyramids of Egypt on the night of the super blood moon in 2017 was just like a really special experience. And the next day, uh, met this man from Brazil and his apprentice who came up to my hotel room and gave me a two hour activation session uh, where he said at the age of seven, he had a near death experience and learned, was given this gift of how to open people's channels. Right. And I said, sign me up, bro. <laughs> Let's do it. And so he came up and for two and a half hours uh, did this session on me and every day for the next month, I would call him on WhatsApp and for five minutes, he would take me through this reactivation meditation and then say, okay, be in the light, Adam, be in the light. And so, and then he would hang up the phone and I would just start writing with my eyes closed or half closed. And around day 15 or 16, that's when I got the message. This, these entries are not just for you that share them. And that's where cosmic philosophy came. Those are the direct journal entries from the crazy closed eyed writing sessions that I did after my time in Egypt in the pyramids. (laughs) That's why they sound like they're, they're from somewhere else because they are. Well, words are just rapping for the frequency inside them. Are you kidding me? Like that's, that's mine. The ones on the left, the ones on the left. Okay, how about, how about embrace all feelings as uh, being drops in the waterfall of the infinite? That then, is not, that is one of those channeled, I wrote that with my eyes closed after one of these sessions. I forgot that that's what you, how this book came about, but that, you know, I'm, I'm so much for idiomotor response, which is what that is. It's like what people call quote unquote higher self, because I don't really know how I feel about higher self, that term as like us as infinite beings um but i mean your higher self still loves you no matter how you feel about it i know i i love my higher self i just the term the word kind of is one of those spiritual like i don't know try to be like try to be connected try to be this it's a woo woo word to me and um uh, i don't know obviously i have my issues with it and i'm okay (laughs) with that (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I have I have uh, issues with a lot of uh, what happens in kind of the new age spiritual world, um, for sure. I, I think that for a lot of people, when they look at 
me as even, you know, I'm wearing a, a snapback hat and, and a tank top and I'm, I'm releasing music on Spotify. That's like hip hop pop music. And uh, I think that, that people may be surprised at how deeply I go into those realms of spirituality and esoterics. You know, obviously if you listen to my podcast, you would know, but um, I, I, part of that is I, I don't really vibe with all of it. Yeah. You know, I think there is a lot of the best way to describe it for me is I feel like there's a lot of performance in it that uh, bothers me. And I blessings to anyone who's in that. I think a lot of people when they first have this experience of awakening and they have this experience of oneness and, and they, they believe in crystals and all of the stuff. Uh, Cause I was not that person growing up. I was not raised that way. I, in fact, the exact opposite that, you know, a younger version of me would punch the me now in the face. So I feel <laughs> that there's an aspect of this where I, um, I understand the excitement of it. You know, it's it, when I first had that awakening experience going, wow, this is a whole new world and, and it's exciting and it's fresh and it's, and wow. And so, yeah, I started wearing crystals and I started wearing a mala and, um, I got a tattoo, a dream catcher tattooed on my arm. And, you know, like that stuff, that stuff happens. I get where that comes from. Um, and, uh, it's, it's pretty rampant. And I think that the, the biggest piece about that is not to complain about it, but to have compassion for, uh, almost just, I think about it like as a little kid, I used to get so excited for a new sport or a new game or something. I say, mom, I want to do roller hockey and, and get my mom to buy me all the, the roller skates and the stick and the thing. And then I sign up for roller hockey and I do a season and I go, I don't want to play that anymore. And then say, oh, but I'm really excited about this. And so I go and get the things and it's like, oh, I don't want to play that anymore seeing it through the lens of that initial excitement of a little kid who's just found something that they might actually really love. And so having that compassion as opposed to being going, Oh, you don't, you're, you're fake or whatever. Um, that also is not supportive. And by having that compassion, we can nurture that relationship because the only thing that's really missing from that in any way, I think is often the integration piece. Mm -hmm. People aren't taking the time to integrate into their lives, the new um, messages, the new uh, ways of being, the new wisdom, the new um, ideas. And it, that takes time and it takes con consistency over time to really embody what you're speaking about. And I think that if more people could focus on how to integrate those decisions into their lives, that would be a really good thing. Yeah, I think that's part of where the seeker in us comes is like, you have to have that seeker part, I think, because it's it's the spark, it's the stimulant for you to be able to quote unquote, remember yourself. And I say you remember you, which is your own universe because it is your own universe. There, there is so much going around and so many individual pieces to your whole that you have to, because we forgot. So you have to come back and remember, I think so, something that you said is that you're infinite until you, you're something about until you stop trying to be, you're what? You're, I you're say infinite you, the moment you stop trying to be. You're infinite the moment you stop trying to be. Right. Yeah. So you um, go through that process of stirring and spinning and then, oh. Yeah. Cause the moment that you, you try, the moment that you try, there's the very idea that you're not <laughs> like trying to be infinite is based off of you holding a belief that you're not mm -hmm. already. And so the, the act of trying to be infinite in some way, shape or form puts in place the resistance that would prevent it from happening. And so, and, and honestly, this is also a much more, this is what my, I, I was going to say much more mature, but that implies that it's like, everyone's going to, if over time get to the same conclusion. And that's not the case. Mm -hmm. This is just for myself. The direction that I've evolved is much more equanimous to 
everyone has their own perspectives. Everyone has their own relationship to spirituality, to God, to uh, this, this reality that we're living in. And mine is not any more true than anyone else's. At, at the end of the day, the question that we get to ask is, is not, is it true? The, the question that everyone gets to ask themselves around their belief systems is, is this supportive? and effective for me getting to live the life that I want to live and be the person I want to be. Mm. And if the answer is no, this is not supporting me anymore, then change it. If your relationship, if someone has a relationship with God that because of their relationship with God, they are living a life of prayer and devotion. And they're a really good human who's helping a lot of people and who sees the beauty of the world and sees every day as a miracle, then don't tell, don't take the stance. Well, I don't believe in God. God's made up like blah, blah, blah. Who cares? It doesn't actually matter whether God exists or doesn't exist empirically in some if we could even prove that, what matters is does this person's belief in God mean that they're showing up and helping make this world a more loving place? And if they are, stop trying to disprove them and start figuring out why your belief system about the world is having you spend your time trying to disprove them. Yeah. Spend your time making this world a more loving place. And uh, that that perspective to me is the, the question that I always ask myself. And, and when I am evaluating with any of the clients that I work with in, in a coaching capacity, I just say, listen, I'm not here to tell you what to believe. I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm just here for you and I to be on the same page about what you want for your life. And then we get to ask the question, hey, is, is this way of thinking supporting you in that? Is this way of, is, are these belief systems actually supporting you? And if the answer is no, let's change them. Yeah, that's great. That was, it just reminds me of when you first started your coaching and the stories you told of like just your confidence and, um, you know, building your practice and um, coming from a space of having not. So like programming your mind and pro reprogramming your thinking so that, you know, you could be in that success so that you started seeing yourself in those um, successes. And I mean, your journey is just freaking amazing. And it's been all public. I mean, well, not maybe not all, but pretty darn huge chunk of it in yeah. public. And that's kind of what you talk to your mom about. But like, you're so upfront and honest, like, what was that the art of choosing love, like went through your whole like went through relationships and went through all kinds of things. And, you know, those beautiful women that you were linked with, and, um, you know, <laughs> one of which I still speak to here and there, but um, yeah, just so, uh, so amazing to watch your journey and, and, you know, link in and see what's, what's going on. I wonder what's going on. God, what is he doing now? He's so create. You are so creative. It's a really oh, thank you. beautiful to witness. Um, and, you know, both of the women that I know that you were with, because I didn't really, Heather, I didn't really link in on that chain very much. But um, the other two I uh, was very much into because they were performers and just watching what you guys created together um, was just so beautiful. And I'm like, God, I'm inspired. But I'm like, how, how do I do that? But then I, I stepped away from comparing and just allowed those things to come forth in me because just because you're doing it one way doesn't mean that mine has to look that way because that's not me to be what you're doing so I'm it, it's I'm like wow okay what I'm doing is great <laughs> you correct me if I'm wrong we did an interview years and years and years ago with my previous partner mm -hmm. um that was probably if I had to guess now that was probably like seven or eight years ago yeah um and you interviewed us and I What's, what's funny is at that time, we were obviously already sharing stuff online publicly because that's how we gotten connected and why you wanted to interview us. And, um, you know, it's 2021 now. My first videos that I put out around sharing, I don't call it coaching. I just, I, I started putting out videos just sharing what I was learning, right? And my perspectives and my thoughts on things. 
And that was in 2013. So it's been eight years that I've been releasing content for free on the internet. <laughs> and I, um, it's interesting because the, the reason I share like I do is, is just because I don't think there's any, there's no like secret to it. And I don't come from money. I don't come from, uh, you know, a silver spoon in my mouth. I've had my share of issues for like sexual abuse and uh, depression and being cheated on. And like, I've had these experiences too, where it's not like I've had the easiest life necessarily free of trauma and wounding. And so if you've, you've actually observed and watched my journey from like, just kind of starting coaching to being paid a million dollars for my coaching to uh, doing poetry, just putting it out on the internet and, and doing these small shows of like 50 people um, coming to listen to me do poetry to having a poem go super viral and get 200 million views. Like my, my journey from starting to now has been insane. And you're right. The whole thing's actually been recorded through my mm. social media online. And um, it's pretty wild to me how long we've been connected and uh, just so appreciating how you followed along. And, and my hope is, and maybe you can tell me if it, it's true, but like my hope is that people, like I've laid a blueprint because along the way I struggled with money and scarcity. I, I struggled with PTSD from sexual abuse and intimacy in my relationship. Mm -hmm. I struggled with dating and figuring out how to date once I was single. I struggled with depression from, and like I shared the entire time what I was doing and how I was moving through it. And so the blueprints there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I, as you're speaking, I'm realizing that I think that my thing is I, I get kind of scared of like, what happens if I can? Because I, at first it was, I don't think I can, like, I can't, I can't do that. And now it's like, I can do that. And what happens when I do? So <laughs> what did, you, I mean, cause I'm sure you were shy. Like what's gaming? What was your gaming name? I looked forever. I wrote it down and I had it. I'm like, what, what is your gaming name? <laughs> is it brick ice? What, what, what is your, no, what it is was it? easy cheese, easy cheese. I was a semi, for people who don't know, I was a semi pro gamer, video game player uh, back in the day uh, of playing a game called Counter-Strike, which is one of those games where all you see is the little gun on the screen and you go around shooting people and it's like bad guys versus good guys. Uh, I played that to the point where we would travel to tournaments and enter for money with my team and we would practice every week and I would play for 12 hours straight on the computer, yeah. I just think that's so great because that's so like not where you are right now. So I was also, I was also um, you know, on, on the Arizona national team as a wrestler and yeah. uh, trained mixed martial arts in college and thought I was going to do some like UFC style cage fights. Mm -hmm. um, I have a lot of different aspects to my personality and that's something that's really important for me to get across to people too is, and I speak openly about this, you know, like I've, I'm someone who his entire life is devoted to creativity and spreading love through creativity. And meanwhile, like I like to, to every once in a while, it's been actually probably a month. Um, but I like to smoke cannabis, uh, with my friends or have a good cocktail or, uh, yeah, I'm trying to think premarital sex, like things that people would judge sometimes. Um, I don't, I, I want people to understand you can, you can, there's not anything that makes you this empirically bad person because of some, some choice that you're making. And uh, my past doesn't define me and mm -hmm. my actions, you may not agree with all of them. And yet, can you see the love that's present? Can you see the amount of intention and effort that goes into um, helping people on this planet? Yeah. And I, I think it's similar to, you know, when they talk about um, like racism, the only people who are racist really are people who have no actual interaction with that opposite, with the other race. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? If, if, if you actually have some time to spend with families uh, like a Jewish family or a black family or an Arab family or whatever, uh, you're going to learn that we have way more in common than we ever have different. And so I feel uh, similarly, if I can just shine a light on all of the stuff that, that I've done in my life and shine a light on all of the good that's happening, starting a nonprofit, having my online community, the create community, um, helping people make, making high level personal development affordable to people like my online community, the create community.com. I bring in people who get paid tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, even a million dollars for their coaching services to come in and teach in the community. And mm-hmm. that, that membership is less than a hundred dollars a month. And, uh, they're getting, there's a class every single week. So to me, I'm dedicating my life to being of service as best I can. And, um, it doesn't matter what, what other people think about that. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. And that reminds me that like when you went through the whole, well, you're still sort of doing the, the plant medicine thing is um, it's a whole world that I'm just not, I, 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 I'm, I'm aware of it and I believe how it works and everything, but it's just not my way. So I spent some time understanding or listening to what you were saying and, and receiving where you were coming from. And then something came up about uh, the, <laughs> the, the, one of the medicines went to one of your friends and like made it very clear why you needed to do it. And so I was like, as a person who understands, like my thing is peyote, like peyote medicine speaks to me, but not to ingest it physically, but to receive the energy of peyote. I can receive the energy of it and I don't have to ingest it. A a lot of other plant medicines and, you know, things that happen when, Um, like I can call a plant that's sitting next to a friend or something like that. I can see it. I can feel it. I can say, you know, cause plants, what's that Stevie wonders album uh, where he recorded the music of plants. So we all have that vibration in that energy. But anyways, I was trying to understand and not be in a space of judgment to, to bring love into my heart for that part of you that I was experiencing that is on, is that is doing all of that medicine and I get it. So, yeah. And, I, and it's, it's an interesting thing because to some people I've done a lot of it to other people. I, I barely scratched the surface, you know, it, it really mm-hmm. depends. I went uh, recently down to Arcana spiritual center down in, in Mexico and did a week of, of plant medicine and did six different ceremonies, three different medicines, six different ceremonies in a very short window of time. And, um, but I hadn't sat in like ayahuasca, for example, that was my first ayahuasca ceremony in a year and a half. I went a year and a half without sitting ayahuasca. I don't feel a need to do it. I do it when I feel called to it. And I also share, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of role models, thought leaders, influencers, celebrities out in the space that are doing these things that aren't talking about it because they're afraid of what people will think or how it'll hurt their brand or lose followers or whatever. But I'm not here to care about that. I'm here to tell you what's working for me. And Mm -hmm. ayahuasca specifically, but plant medicines in general, but ayahuasca specifically has been one of the biggest teachers in my entire life. I've, it was the catalyst for my entire spiritual awakening. And if I am just sitting here telling people, okay, just meditate, do yoga and breath work. And you're going to blah, 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 without telling them, this is actually what's made a huge difference in my life. I'm, I, I might as well be lying. And so I think that um, because people are going to take that, by the way, do the meditation, do the yoga, do the breath work, not see the same results, potentially some of them won't, and then beat themselves up and think they're doing it wrong because Adam said that he got it from this. Mm -hmm. And I I just want to be honest and transparent about it. And I think it's great for you to be able to acknowledge, oh yeah, there was a part of me that was resistant to it or judging it, but stayed open-minded to hear it out and that's what we get to do on this planet. We, we're not all going to agree. We're not even all going to be on the same path. I, I don't think the plant medicines for everyone. I don't think everyone should do them. I don't think everyone needs to. Uh, and if you feel called to it, I know for myself personally, it's been a huge, massive uh, benefit. And so I think it's great that you remained open-minded to it. And hopefully I, I'm releasing in the next two weeks, I'm releasing a podcast. It's a 30 minute 
musing. It's like one of the longest musings I've ever done describing my experience down at Arcana and, and why I went down there and what I gained from it. And uh, I think that if we can just remain open-minded, we might actually gain something valuable, even from someone who's doing it in a way that we don't want to do it. Exactly. Adam, you're so amazing and beautiful. And I just want to thank you so much for your time here. Um, I know you have somewhere else to be. Um, and it's just such a beautiful gift that what you said recently is that awareness gives you choice. And that's, that's what it is. And I love that you say choose love. I always say stay light and stay easy. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's like stay light and stay easy and just, you know, just be, just enjoy somehow find whatever little piece that you can of joy and, and allow that to multiply. 100%. Why, why else are we here? Why did you come here just to complain about it? Come on, come on. (laughs) You don't go to a party just to complain about going to the party. Come, you came, you came to this human, you came to the, you came to experience life. Like let's have a good time. Right. Exactly. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate your time and and always uh, you've been uh, a follower, a supporter, a fan, a a friend for so long. Um, And thank you. It it means, it means so much to me to, you know, there's a lot of people with social media kind of having blown up over the last, uh, you saw it, right? Social media is starting to take off. There's a lot of new followers on a regular basis and um, having this tribe of people who've really seen the journey from the beginning uh, it's really special. So thank you for, for always being there. I appreciate you. My pleasure. <laughs> I appreciate you. All right. Have a beautiful day. Yeah, you too. I'll see y'all next Friday.